Welcome to SPC Insights with Dr. Bill, simplifying SPC and statistical analysis. This video is going to take a look at process capability and the four metrics that we use to measure process capability. What do they really measure? What do they tell us about our process and specifications? Is one long term? Is one short term? Don't they measure the same thing? Well, they really don't measure the same thing as we will see. So in this video, we're going to go back and review the four metrics of process capability. We're going to talk about the capability ratio, the performance ratio, and then we're going to talk about well, whether or not a process is centered impacts those. What are these really measuring in terms of specifications, the process, and whether or not it's centered or not? So we're going to talk about the ability of a process to meet specifications. That's what process capability does. We use ratios to do that. And it's a ratio of two rooms, really. One is the room that we have to, uh, within the specifications. And the other is the room that our process needs to operate typically plus or minus three standard deviations. So one room is going to be based on specifications. If you have an uh, upper spec and a lower spec, the difference between those is the room based on specification as shown in this diagram. You have upper spec and lower spec and then the room. But then you also have the room based on process variation. And this is the plus or minus three standard deviations. The difference is there are two different types of standard deviations we're going to use. One is a sigma, which is estimated from the average range on a control chart. The other is standard deviation, which is calculated using all the data. We're going to start with process capability ratio. The capability ratio is given CP is equal to the upper spec minus the lower spec divided by six sigma, called the natural tolerance of the process. And you can see that the CP is the ratio of the, of the room based on specification over the room the process needs to operate. The performance ratio is very similar to the capability ratio. It's given by the upper spec minus the lower spec, the room the specifications need, divided by six times S. Here S is the calculated standard deviation using all the data. So the only difference between CP and PP is how the process variation is calculated. Performance ratio uses the calculated standard deviation S using all the data. Now let's take a look about process centering and we're going to start with CPK. This combines CP with process centering. It takes into account where the process is centered. It's the minimum of CPU and CPL, where CPU is a capability based on the upper spec, and CPL is a capability based on the lower spec. So as you can see in this chart, we have the CPU is the upper spec minus the average divided by three sigma. The sigma comes from the average uh, range on a, on a range control chart. And this gives you there the area based on the specification. CPL is the average minus the lower spec limit divided by 3 sigma, and that gives you the room available based on specifications. So CPK is also the room available based on specifications closest to the average and the room the process needs to operate. So lower one of CPU and CPL will always be the one that's closest to the average. And it's 3 sigma is now just half of the 6 sigma, and that's the room the process needs to operate. So we're going to be able to take that ratio to discover CPK. Now PPK, again, it's going to be very similar to CPK. The only difference is that it's going to be the minimum of PPU and PPL, but now instead of using sigma, we're using the calculated standard deviation. So PPL, for example, is the average minus the lower spec divided by 3 times S. So that's the only difference between CPK and PPK is the use of the calculated standard deviation instead of sigma. Now are these capabilities short or long-term capability? CPK is sometimes called short-term because it's based on sigma, the short-term variation in a range control chart, and PPK is sometimes called long-term because it's a calculated standard deviation. But there's not really a short or long-term capability. There are two different types of capability depending on what you use to measure the variation. So let's take a look at a process that's in control. We take some data that was randomly generated, used a normal distribution. The average of that distribution was 100. We had a standard deviation of 10. Here's an example of some of the data that we used to generate this. And then we analyzed the results using an individual's control chart. And then we said it was a stable process. And as you can see, the individual values are plotted on the X chart. And you calculate an average and calculate the control limits and their 
nothing beyond the control limits and there are no patterns like eight in a row above or below the average so the X charts in control and the moving range chart then we calculate the moving range between consecutive points we plot those calculate an average also as well as an upper control limit and both these charts are in statistical control so we have that the process is in statistical control so we calculate the four process capability indices CP so the upper spec minus the lower spec is 125 minus 75 for 50 and that gives us a value of CP equal to 1.15 now we're going to take it but we're going to use a standard deviation to calculate PP instead of the average sigma it's 1.03 those are very similar numbers 1.15 and 1.03 then we calculate CPK it's 1.12 then we calculate PPL and it is 1.01 all these are similar because your process is in statistical control. So if your four metrics come out being very similar, you know your process is in control. Now let's take a look at an unstable process. And here's the next chart for that. We generated some data for that. It changes over time, as you can see. We have points beyond the control limit. We have runs above and below the average. It's not a process that's in statistical control. In addition, the moving range chart is not in statistical control either. As you can see, we have a point beyond the control limit. So it's an unstable process. Now what happens when you calculate those four indices? CP is 1.37, PP 0.72, big difference. CPK is 0.58, PPK is 0.30 also. So there's a big difference between CP and PP. That's due to the process being unstable. There's also a big difference between CPK and CPK, and that's due to the fact that it's not centered. So in this video, what you've learned is you've learned what those four metrics are measuring. They represent the ratio of the room available. They're going to let you know in general if your process is in statistical control and if it's operating close to the center of the specifications. And why is that? Well, the reason for that is if CP and PP metrics are essentially the same, your process is in control. If they're not the same, the process is out of control. If all of them are the same, the process is in control and operating at or near the center point. If they're different, CP and PP, than the counterpoints, you're not operating at the center. And if they're all four different, then you're out of control and not operating at the center point of specifications, as we saw in the example of the unstable. So thank you for coming and seeing our video, SPC Insights with Dr. Pill. I hope you enjoyed it. Click on the YouTube to subscribe or visit our SPC knowledge base. We have over 220 free articles where you can make your own capability analysis using our software at www.spcforexcel.com.